something to lose Baby, all I need is Thought I'd be stuck in the static forever Telling myself it could be enough I didn't know that I was looking for something to jump Until I jumped in the bus Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel Today we're going to be talking about Dinan in Belgium this delightful medieval town should not be confused with the equally charming Dinan in northern France. While they're both said the same, they're actually spelt a little differently and so you can easily differentiate between them when reading something such as in a guidebook. The easiest way to get to Dinan is by train. Unfortunately, there are no direct trains from Brussels. As such, you will have to take a train to Namur and then a further train to Dinan. The train takes around half an hour between Namur and Dinan and trains run every half an hour or so between the two cities throughout the day. As you can see, it was a bit of a construction site during our visit, but was easy to navigate nonetheless. The first place you want to head to upon arrival is the tourist office. There's a Dinan tourist information office on the opposite side of the Meuse to the church, where you can pick up free maps and leaflets about the history of the town. Directly outside, there's a larger than life Dinan sign where you can snap photos of yourself with the sign or simply just the beautiful backdrop of the town itself. Just down the road from the Dinan tourist office and just before the saxophone bridge, you'll find a life-size statue of Charles de Gaulle. This has actually been erected close to the place where de Gaulle was wounded in World War I. The town is probably most famous for being the birthplace of the saxophone. After all, it was here in Dinan where Adolf Sax developed the instrument in the 19th century. Today, there are reminders of this all over town. As well as saxophone statues, there are saxophone inspired beers, chocolates, and even a museum dedicated to the musical instrument. But more on this in a bit. Truth be told, as with many medieval towns in Europe, one of the greatest joys of a visit to Dinan is simply strolling around the town and allowing it to reveal itself to you. It's pretty much impossible to get lost as there's only a couple of streets in town. Just be sure to wear comfortable shoes as cobblestones are abundant. The main church of Dinan is an imposing masterpiece topped with an onion shaped dome. Free to visit, the church dates back to the 13th century and is dedicated to Our Lady. The church was built on the site of a former 10th century place of worship, which unfortunately collapsed in 1228, leaving nothing but the north door. Wander inside today and you'll find a whole treasure trove of stained glass windows, magnificent altar pieces and ornate stone carvings. Of particular note about the church is the pear-shaped bell tower, which is best seen from the citadel above. Now I'm wrapped up in you can't deny One of the main attractions in Dinan is hard to miss thanks to the fact that it is perched high above the rest of the town. Dinan Citadel is easily accessible from the city centre thanks to a cable car which takes visitors from the centre of the town, right next to the Collegiate Church, all the way up to the top of the mountain. I'm a bit scared of heights but found that the journey was over before we even knew we had departed as it literally takes less than a minute. There are a few things to do at the Citadel itself. As well as admiring the view, be sure to bring a camera along as it really is picturesque. You can see various exhibitions detailing the history of Dinan during World War I. Experience what it's like to be in a bombed out World War I bunker, though this does make you feel kind of weird, and various other exhibits about the history of the town and its surroundings. Truth be told, I think it takes a couple of hours to see everything, but we were quite tired at that point, so we didn't stay that long.
should think it's so important to convince everyone else that you're not boring but it's making me feel like my skin is crawling i keep pouring out my empathy to someone i don't even see eye to eye with i don't mind if you don't have it all together yeah i get it we are all human but i give you an inch and you take miles it's tragic ruining my sanity with tales of animosity I There are 408 steps to reach the Citadel if you don't decide to take the cable car. Rather confusingly, it costs exactly the same price whether you opt to take the cable car or walk. Therefore, we opted to take the cable car up and climb back down the stairs as it was certainly less work that way. The stairs are really, really narrow and uneven in places, so you definitely need good shoes for it. But the views are incredible and so I'm definitely glad that we did opt to do this, even if it took a lot longer to get down than I had expected. It was then kind of time for lunch and we were a bit hungry so we went to this cafe called Le Lido and the only thing on the menu was a croque monsieur but I don't eat ham so I asked for a cheese toasty. It was actually really tasty and it was served with ketchup. We then carried on strolling around the town. As you can see, there's just loads of shops selling beer. There's lots of cobbled streets. The views over the Citadel are simply amazing. And we were quite lucky with the weather, even though it was April and you'd think it would have been sunny, it was still kind of gray and miserable. Uh, we then went to the saxophone museum. En route, there were all of these saxophone sculptures once we were at the saxophone museum, you can see there's this really cool bench of adult sex that you can take your photo with. It kind of started raining a bit, so it was great that we were headed into the museum. Although the museum is just two or three rooms and it's quite small, so I guess you only need 10 to 15 minutes left. And even less probably if you're traveling with tired or hungry kids. Nevertheless, it was quite cool to have this free indoor space. Nearby, there were even more saxophone sculptures just underneath the Citadel rock. And then we walked a little bit further to see another saxophone sculpture that I think is one of the older ones in the area. As you can see, it's truly just a glorious place to stroll around. The thing I don't think I've mentioned is that you can actually book boat cruises. We really wanted to go from Dinant to Namur, like one way, or even a return journey, but that's just not possible. We looked everywhere online, but you can still go on short 45 minute cruises that you can buy at the same time as you buy tickets to the Citadel, and that saves you a few euros. just a little bigger i don't know if i've seen anything that's sadder it's so hard to comprehend how you don't even understand stepping on me without even trying never seen somebody get so good at lying it's impressive you don't spend all your time crying over we then headed back across the saxophone bridge in order to head to our final activity of the day which was honestly one of my favorites so we were going to the left museum also known as Leffe, i guess i think in french is left and in flemish which is dutch it is Leffe. so depending on who you speak to will depend on which answer you get as to how to pronounce it Either way, the views on the way were really gorgeous. It was kind of a 15 minute walk from the center of the town and then we had finally arrived and we were ready to learn about the history of life and also drink a beer. <laughs> There are actually a few different ticket combinations available, but we opted for the one which is like you get a gift with it and also another drink, which was probably kind of a dangerous idea when we still had to catch our train back to Namur. So we started out by looking at the old cloisters and then we went into the museum portion, which was actually really fun. Even if you're not a museum person, you'll probably enjoy this because there's lots of interactive exhibits where you can learn about the history of the beer, the brewing, the history of Dinot in general. And there's a fun little quiz at the end that I unfortunately lost it but it was still really enjoyable nonetheless
it was then time to try the beer and that's probably when my footage started to go a little wrong as you can imagine so we went back out to the terrace and we handed in our coupon that we had acquired when we bought our tickets and we were given a beer you can choose which left to try i chose the ruby one i really liked it it's kind of fruity light very summery and after we had the first one we decided that why not have a second one so that is exactly what we did and that is why i don't have very much footage from the rest of our day However, we quickly made it back to our, the train station because we realized that there was only one train an hour by that point. And so we rushed down to the train station a little tipsy before getting on the train and heading back to Namur. Thank you for watching. And if you like this, subscribe and like for more.